So, as can be seen from this screen, the main header level is created, the material, the affected batch, the customer material number, and any of the customer and sales information have been pulled through automatically. So from this, we can um, continue and then populate further information regarding the complaint. So, this is in the first tab, Reference Object. We can then move forward to the second tab, which is a subject. Now here we can assign basic information regarding the notification, so we can enter a description. So in this particular example, I will enter damaged containers, and then any information that would pertain to this complaint. We can, at this point, if we so wish, also assign a coding. So this would be a basic categorization of what the notification is regarding. So by clicking on the match code for coding, we can then look down the list and find an appropriate categorization. So in this particular case, we have packaging issues. So the next tab we'll move to is processing. So at this point we get to assign further information. So in this case we can assign the priority. So we will say this is urgent. Uh, we can assign a department responsible. However, the notification has been configured to automatically find the right responsible department for the material affected. We can then inf enter information regarding which parties are involved in this notification. So. I can enter myself as the author. We can then look for the appropriate groups that we require to fulfill these functions. So, for example, finance, we can look through their structure, our organizational structure, to find the appropriate finance group. So I can navigate down to the appropriate group of people. And then when I'm satisfied, I can select and assign. And I can repeat the same for all the other ones. So I assign the appropriate group as required. And then once satisfied, I can click on continue. So now we've entered all the partners that we need to enter at this point, we can then go forward and automatically generate tasks for this notification by selecting the Tasks tab. Now with the priority assigned, I can click on the Gener Determine Tasks button and the tasks will automatically be determined. And so a list of tasks will automatically be generated for this notification. And from this list, we can then go through these tasks and execute them as required. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to keep all these tasks. I will just keep two tasks for the time being to demonstrate how the notification will function. But the list of tasks that are required can be as as large or as few as are required to complete the investigation. So as can be seen, we have two tasks. Now, in order to complete the notification, both these tasks must be completed. As can be seen from the task, the plan start and plan finish date have automatically been populated as required for this notification. So as can be seen, the end is is there. Now, what we can also do for this notification is to generate any partners which can be generated automatically. So I can go to Determine Partner, and then the system will find out who the responsible people are, depending upon data within the notification, as thus. So, two people have been determined for these two tasks and also in the processing the department responsible for managing this complaint has also been found 
Now once we are satisfied that the header data for this notification and the tasks we require are completed, we can then re put the notification in process so we can change the status. Once we are satisfied with the header information of this notification and we are ready to proceed with any activities that are required, we can put the notification in process. So the status will change. And then, as required, we can ha have any tasks executed as part of this investigation. We simply select the tasks required and we release them. And as mentioned earlier, if this is coupled with workflow, these tasks will be sent to the appropriate person responsible. Once we've completed all the changes, we can then save the notification and the process is begun. Now, at varying points in this process, changes will be made to this notification or the task. So what we can demonstrate is here is that we can show how the task can be completed by the person who is responsible for these tasks. It's shown we can enter the transaction to change tasks and we can see which tasks are appropriate to us. There are two tasks available for processing in this notification, so we shall select the first task and click on continue. So we are shown here the task that is available for processing. Now we have configured a means of task processing that allows us to control that process and allows us to monitor what stage notification processing is at. So this task is released. So at the first point, the person responsible will receive this task and can select that task as scheduled and when satisfied with that point can save the task. This can be shown in lists of tasks and what stage these tasks are at and these user statuses allow us to control the stage that that task is at. So the current change we've made is to acknowledge that the task has been seen by the person responsible and can then process the task. At the next stage the person can then process the task further and they would denote that task is in process, i.e. work is being performed on that task. As discussed, we can recall text information within this task, and then as time goes along and that particular task progresses, further information can be recorded. Now, at the next stage, once a task is completed, we can then go back into the task and then record, that info record the last of the information and then mark that task as completed, which will allow this task to be reviewed by the notification coordinator. And as a notification coordinator, that person can then come into the task review the task and decide whether that task is satisfactory. So there are two options. They can mark the task as satisfactory or they can mark the task as requiring further work to be performed to rectify it. So we will, I will demonstrate in this particular example that action. If we now return to the task, we have to complete the activities that are required before we can put this back into the status of the work completed. We can manage these task status changes through authorization management so only the person who is authorized to make that status change can do that. Also by coupling this with workflow we can have a very powerful tool to notify the appropriate people at the right times to get them to take the appropriate action in terms of executing or reviewing this task. This whole process allows reviews to be performed and any actions to be carried out as required. So now we can say that the task has been revised in this particular case, has been, ready, has been completed and ready for review again. And I can then save this task. Once reviewed again, the person who is responsible for the task can mark the task as satisfactory then complete the task and then mark it as successful. We have reached a point where this task is completed. 
Now if we return to the notification itself, we will notice that the status of this task has been updated. So if we now go to the Tasks tab, it can be observed that the task is now greyed out and completed. Before we continue on to complete this notification, I will demonstrate information regarding recording any information and status and outcome of the notification so far. Now, in the user status box, you can see the status end deck, which means no decision made. At some point during the investigation, a point is going to be reached where the notification is going to be decided whether it is justified or not justified. So we can then select the, one of the next two statuses. So in this particular example, we can state the complaint is justified. Now, if the complaint is merely in the justified status, it cannot be completed, even if all tasks are completed. If in the not justified status, it can be completed. 